Texas House Democratic Caucus Chair, State Representative Chris Turner from Grand Prairie. Thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. So what did you make of the governor's special session items that he uh, made uh, announced today? Well, it's a grab bag wish list of, you know, far right uh, extreme uh, policy ideas that are intended to fire up the, the, the Trump base. Uh, you know, clearly the governor's really worried about his primary election um, to, you know, put the, the, the kind of issues on the special session agenda that he did, um, particularly when we have so many real concerns uh, that matter to, to all Texans, uh, you know, whether that's our electric grid, whether that's the fact that Texas continue, under Greg Abbott's leadership continues to uh, uh, be last in the nation in terms of number of and percentage of, of uh, Texans with health insurance, uh, and, and the fact that our COVID-19 vaccination program has plateaued uh, with just 41 percent of Texans being fully vaccinated. Those are the issues the governor should be focused on as the leader of our state, but he's just apparently not capable of doing that. Uh, are you saying that, I mean, some of the issues that he has put on there, I mean, he would say, I would imagine, or any Republicans say, hey, our voters do care about this. Yeah. Um, so what's wrong with that? Well, um, he might say that. Um, and so if he says that, what he's talking about is the one or two percent of Texans who participate in Republican primaries. I would argue that uh, the governor is elected to be the governor for all 29 million Texans. Uh, and that's what his constitutional responsibility is. Uh, but I think that's exactly right. I think that there uh, he's concerned about his primary election. And so he wants to engage uh, the, the Trump base uh, with things like uh, made up Republican priorities like critical race theory, uh, which they don't even know what that is, and uh, new restrictions on a woman's right to access abortion, uh, attacking transgender youth, uh, and, a lot, and of course, uh, anti-voter legislation as well. So, um, so those are the issues he's chosen to focus on. Uh, Democrats are going to continue to stay focused on the real issues that matter to, to all Texans. Let's talk about uh, elections integrity, uh, which obviously you've spoken out very much so. And uh, I'm wondering, how concerned are you that Republicans are going to pass this uh, without having much input from the Democrats? Well, you know, as you know, uh, Democrats were successful in killing uh, the anti-voter legislation at the end of the legislative session uh, by uh, leaving the House chamber uh, shortly before the midnight deadline. And, uh, and what I hope happens here is that uh, we've seen Republicans be rather embarrassed by what they tried to do there at the end of May. And they've walked back a lot of those provisions, uh, like restricting Sunday voting, which was a clear attack on African-American voters in our state. Uh, they've walked back this provision to allow a judge to overturn an election without any evidence. Uh, and so uh, my, my hope is they continue uh, being embarrassed and continue walking back some of the uh, really uh, uh, suppressive components of that bill. But we have to see what they file. We have to see what it is they actually propose doing, uh, and then we'll evaluate it at that time. Uh, but so far, we haven't seen a bill. You have said, and other Democrats have said, everything is on the table again as far as whether you walk out and deny a quorum in the House. And uh, I asked Speaker Phelan about that and what his response would be. And, uh, he's keeping that close to the vest, but he says all of his options remain open, too, uh, which my understanding includes, uh, you know, having the troopers go after, you know, and bring uh, the lawmakers back, locking the doors. Uh, what do you make of that? Well, um, I mean, this, you know, the speaker says what, 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 what I would say is that, of course, all options are on the table. Uh, I think all, every lawmaker has to has to have that approach coming into it to a, a session. Um, what I would say is that I hope that Republicans will not bring bills to the floor uh, that are so offensive to our constituents uh, that, uh, that, that, uh, that they force us to, to consider options like that. Uh, but we'll always reserve our options. We know what the Speaker's uh, powers are under the House rules, uh, and we're very cognizant of that. Uh, and, uh, and, and, you know, we hope that we'll see, uh, as I said a minute ago, we'll see some of the more onerous provisions of uh, what they tried to pass in the regular session abandoned in this special session uh, because they were so offensive to so many Texans. Have Democrats been a part of any conversations with Republicans uh, on elections integrity, 
working towards this special session? Well, I, I have not personally myself. Uh, I'm, I'm sure members have had conversations. That's not unusual for uh, members to be having conversations about any number of, of issues. So uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, you know, I think that, again, we'll have to see what, what actually gets filed and, and uh, referred to, to committees, uh, which presumably will happen tomorrow on the first day of the session. So I think we'll have a more clear picture at that point. Uh, border security, uh, the governor uh, wants to have some funding to support law enforcement in counties. Where are you on that? So in the, in the regular session, uh, the legislature passed a budget that included uh, one point, I believe $1.1 $1 .1 billion for so-called border security, which I think is an excessive uh, waste of money uh, to, uh, to try to uh, take on a task that is not a state responsibility, it's a federal responsibility. And the state is actually very limited on what it can do with respect to border security under, under federal law. Um, and so I think that this is uh, more fodder for Greg Abbott's primary campaign. Uh, I think the, the proof point is last week's campaign rally he had on the border uh, in front of Donald Trump's unfinished wall with, uh, with Trump there and, and a lot of other Republican officials there. Uh, and this is, this is simply about trying to curry favor with Trump and, and his supporters. Uh, and I think him putting border security on the agenda is just further evidence of that. You sent a, uh, a letter to Speaker Phelan either late last week or earlier this week. Did you ever get a response? Are you referring to the letter that a number of members signed? Yeah, we sent that Monday, yeah. Um, I have not seen a response yet. And uh, you have said in that letter, you said you wanted Article 10 funding addressed first. Um, and so I I'm just curious, do you really think that's going to happen first? Um, Speaker Phelan said it has to happen early enough to give uh, the folks time to analyze and get, the, you know, get all the numbers uh, right. But do you ex really expect it to be first? And, not, you know, Republicans, obviously the governor did that to have a little leverage uh, over the Democrats, I would imagine, right? Well, as, as you know, uh, of course, Article 10 is the provision of the budget that funds the entire legislature. So what Greg Abbott did, uh, he didn't punish uh, Democratic members of the legislature. What he's doing is providing a termination notice to 2,100 uh, employees of the legislative branch, uh, many of whom work for nonpartisan agencies within the legislature. Um, and uh, it's a really cynical move. And moreover, it's a violation of the separation of powers, we believe. We believe his, his veto was unconstitutional. And that's why uh, Democrats and a number of other, uh, others have filed uh, a petition in the state Supreme Court seeking a writ of mandamus to essentially block the governor's unconstitutional veto of Article 10. Uh, so we're seeking relief in the court. Uh, because what we believe the governor uh, did is wrong. And if he gets away with this, every future governor is going to say, if I don't get my way in the legislature, I'll just zero out the legislative budget until they bend to my will. That's a horrible precedent. Are you expecting the Supreme Court to act before the special session is over with? I, I, can't, I can't speculate on the court's timing. That's obviously in, within their discretion. You know, we hope, we hope we'll hear something soon from them, but, uh, but that's obviously in their discretion. Uh, my last question to you, and I appreciate your time, and that is uh, you brought up uh, the power grid. And yesterday the governor announced uh, directives that he is making to the Public Utility Commission. Uh, and I'm wondering what your response is to that. Sure. Well, you know, we had a catastrophic uh, failure of our power grid in February, and, and tragically several hundred Texans lost their lives as a result of being without heat. Uh, for, for several days. And, uh, and then more recently, in just a few weeks ago, we saw uh, in early June, uh, when, when, when the hottest temperatures are yet to come, uh, the grid uh, be strained by, by demand, where people are asked to raise their thermostats. Um, and so uh, we clearly have real challenges with our electric grid in Texas. <clears throat> and um, I think a lot of the failures uh, can be traced to a lax oversight from the Public Utility Commission. The Public Utility Commissioners are appointed by the governor. Uh, governor Abbott's appointees were forced to resign uh, earlier this year after the February fiasco. Um, he's appointed new commissioners and now he's given them some suggestions on what he'd like them to do. Um, I think some of those suggestions um, you know, frankly, we're more political in nature by taking shots at renewable forms of energy. You know, the, the, you know, the governor famously in, 
in February, you know, tried to blame the, the, the power outages on the, on the Green New Deal, which was just absurd. Uh, and so this seems like a continuation of that. Um, I think what the what Texas government has to do, both the legislature and the, and the Public Utility Commission, is uh, establish you know, how much power do we need uh, now and in the next several years? How much do we need on peak days in the summer and on the winter? And assess whether we have the generation capacity to do, to do that. And, uh, and if not, how do we uh, obtain that level of generation capacity as, as quickly and as safely as possible? Um, that's, what, that's what has to happen. And I think the steps the legislature took in the regular session were a good first step, but I think they're a first step. And I think more has to be done. Uh, so, you know, I think it's good if the Public Utility Commission does what they can. Uh, I don't think uh, attacking uh, renewable uh, sources of energy like wind and solar are going to get us anywhere. I think that's the exact wrong approach. Uh, but ultimately, I think the legislature is going to have to come back and, and, and do a lot more work on this to, to fix our grid for the long term. Texas House Democratic Caucus Chair Chris Turner, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Jack. Good to be with you.